This lecture is part of an online Galois theory course and will be about the Frobenius endomorphism or possibly automorphism. So first of all we, we just look at the case of finite fields. So suppose R is a ring of characteristic P. In other words, P is equal to zero, where P is some prime, um, two, three, five, or whatever. Then we know that in this ring, if we define phi of A to be A to the P, this is actually an endomorphism of the ring, because A plus B to the P is A to the P plus B to the P, and AB to the P is, of course, A to the P times B to the P. Um, so for finite fields, so if you look at the finite field f p to the n, then phi um, is an automorphism. Um, it's obviously injective and the field is finite, so it must be a, a bijection. And we saw earlier that it generates the Galois group. Um, for general rings or even fields, the Frobenius map need not be an automorphism. For instance, if you look at the at the field K of X for some field K of characteristic P, then the image is contained in K of X to the P, which is um, definitely smaller than the field K of X. So the the, 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 this map is not in general an automorphism of a field. Um, well, um, it seems as if the Frobenius automorphism or endomorphism is only useful in characteristic P. I mean, if you're in characteristic zero, then this construction just doesn't make sense. However, there is a way of getting a Frobenius automorphism um, in characteristic zero. Um, and this gives one of the very few easy ways of constructing explicit elements of Galois groups. I guess the, the other easy way is to use complex conjugation, which is a sort of analogue of the Frobenius automorphism for um, infinite primes. Um, so um, let, let, let's do the easy case, e easiest case. Suppose we have a Galois extension of Q, so Q contained in M. And we're going to assume that M is a finite extension. And the, and the problem is to find elements of this Galois group. Um, well, we, we suppose that M is given by polynomials, so, so we take polynomials over Q and quotient out by some polynomial f of x. And we're going to assume that f of x has integer coefficients and has leading coefficient 1. So it's equal to x to the n plus a n minus 1 x to the n minus 1. So n plus a naught, where the a i's are integers. Um, and the idea is we want to reduce m mod p. Well, this makes no sense because um, p is invertible in m, so um, th th there's no central way to reduce m mod p, where m is a field of characteristic zero. However, instead of defining m to be the rationals modulo this, we can define an integral form of m to be z of x modulo f of x. And you can see that this is now a free z module as a z module of rank n. And now we can reduce this mod p. So for example, we might take f of x equal x squared plus 1 here, and then m would be the Gaussian, the field of Gaussian numbers, but here z of x modulo x squared plus 1 is just the Gaussian integers z of i, which we can reduce modulo primes. Um, we're also going to assume for simplicity that all roots 
of f r in um, the ring r. And the second assumption we're going to make is that um, we assume f is separable modulo p for some prime p. So what does this mean? It means it's got no repeated roots modulo p. Um, so we recall from that that, that a polynomial f has a discriminant um, which is um, a product of um, the differences of the roots, possibly squared, and you see this is non-zero if f has no repeated roots. Now in the case of our polynomial f, the discriminant is some element of the integers because we can write it as some polynomial in the coefficients of the polynomial f with integer coefficients. So its discriminant is in z and all we're asking is that p does not divide the discriminant. So in number theory we say that p is unramified. So if you seen the phrase unramified in a number theory course. It's essentially this condition that it doesn't describe the discriminant. There are, there are some slight differences. We're not bothering to assume R is integrally closed and so on, but never mind that. And now we can form the ring R um, modulo P, which is going to be FP of X modulo f of x. Now we notice that f is irreducible over z by assumption but need not be irreducible mod p. For instance if we take f of x equals x squared plus 1 and we take p equals 5 then f factors as x plus 2, x plus 3, mod 5. Um, so um, if, we, if we reduce the um, ring R modulo P, we can ask what it looks like. Well, F factors um, in FP of x as f1x, f2 of x, and so on. And notice these polynomials are distinct, and in particular they're co-prime, because we assumed that f is irreducible modulo p. Um, so by the Chinese remainder theorem, fp of x modulo f splits as a product of fp of x modulo fi of x. So this is just a product of finite fields. Um, if um, f has multiple roots mod p then more complicated things happen. Um, we don't want to worry about that now. Um, moreover, if um, alpha 1 up to alpha n are the roots of f in R, then we can look at the images in fp of x over fi of x, and they must be distinct um, because um, we assume that f is separable modulo p. So, um, in particular, any automorphism of the ring R, um, which was z of x over f, must act, um, so, so it, it permutes the fields um, fp 
over fi. And if it fixes, so if it maps, say, fp over f1 to itself, it must act non-trivially on fp over f1 unless it is the identity on, on R. And this is because um, if it's not the identity, it's a non-trivial permutation of the roots of F in R and must therefore be a non-trivial permutation of the roots of F in FP because um, um, the, 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 we, we can identify the roots of F in R with the roots in here. Um, similarly, Um, any two automorphisms of R mapping, say, Fp over F1 to Fp over Fi, so that should be Fp of x, that should have been an Fp of x, it should all have been Fp of x. So if it maps that to Fi, um, if, if these are distinct automorphisms, must be distinct um, homomorphisms from fpx over f1 to fpx over fi. Well, what's the point of all this? Well, now we're going to count the automorphisms of R. Um, well, um, the number is going to be at most um, the number of maps from F1 to Fi, so where we sum over all i, which is going to be at most the sum of the degrees of the Fi over the, 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 the constant field fp, um, which is equal to n, which is the degree of f, because um, the product of the fi is just r modulo p, which has dimension n. On the other hand, the number of these automorphisms is equal to the order of the Galois group of um, qx over f, which is equal to the degree of f because we assume this field was a Galois field. So all of these must actually be equalities because we're assuming the extension was um, Galois. So what can we deduce from the fact that these are equalities? Well, first of all, all the fields f p of x over f i of x are isomorphic because there must be the maximal number or the number of maps from f1 to f i must actually be the degree of f i which is positive and secondly we see that um, the subgroup of the Galois group mapping say f p of x over f1 of x to itself maps onto the um, full automorphism group of fp of x over f1 of x. Um, in particular, we now get to the um, key result we really want, the Frobenius automorphism which maps um, a to a to the p of, say, f p of x over f1 of x, is the image of some element of the Galois group of q of x over f of x. 
because we said that any automorphism of this field has to lift to some automorphism of R, and these are all given by, induced by automorphisms of the Galois group. So, to summary, under the assumptions we put on F, we get an automorphism phi of R, which was z of x over f of x, or for that matter, um, q of x over f of x, for each factor of f modulo p. Uh, uh, here, as usual, we have to assume that p doesn't divide the discriminant of r and all the other um, assumptions we put on it. Um, so this automorphism phi is also called a Frobenius autom automorphism. Um, notice that it doesn't raise every element to its pth power because that's only an automorphism mod p. However, it does raise elements to a pth power um, modulo p. Um, so let, let's see an example of it. Um, so here's an example. Let's take f of x equal x squared plus 1, so roots are plus or minus i. And let's find primes p with f separable. Well, that's quite easy. Um, any p not equal to 2 will do. For p equals 2, this polynomial becomes inseparable, but for any odd prime you can see its derivative is, is a multiple of x. So what does the automorphism do? Let's call 5p the, the Frobenius automorphism corresponding to p. Well, it must map i to plus or minus i, because these are the only two roots of x squared plus 1. Now, um, the elements plus or minus i map to the finite field um, fpx modulo um, some factor of x squared plus 1 mod p. And that, that they sort of map injectively to this. Um, and on this finite field, the Frobenius automorphism takes a to a to the p. Um, so in particular, it, um, these root, fourth roots of unity are going to map to fourth roots of unity in this field, and in this field it must map i to i to the p. So it must have the same action here. So phi p of i is equal to i to the p. And let's see what consequences this gives. Um, so we've got this Frobenius automorphism phi p of um, q of, sorry, q of i maps i to i to the p. So let's see what it does. Well, if p is congruent to 1 mod 4, the Frobenius automorphism p of i is equal to i because i to the 5 or 9 or whatever is just i. If p is congruent to 3 mod 4, then the Frobenius automorphism of i is equal to minus i. So it's complex conjugation. Um, well, if the Frobenius automorphism fixes i, then um, it acts trivially um, on the field uh, where we've reduced z of i modulo something. So, so this implies that x squared plus 1 splits mod p because um, the field corresponding to any of factor, factor of this must have its Frobenius automorphism acting trivially, so um, it must just be the finite field of order p. On the other hand, if phi of p is minus i, the Frobenius automorphism is non-trivial on this field, so this implies that x squared plus 1 does not split. Well, x squared plus 1 splitting mod p means 
minus 1 is a square. And x squared plus 1 not splitting means minus 1 is not a square. So from properties of this Frobenius automorphism, we've got the result that minus 1 is a square mod p for p odd is equivalent to saying p is congruent to 1 modulo 4, which is a well-known result you come across in a, in a number theory course. But here we see it's a consequence of looking at the Frobenius automorphism of the polynomial x squared plus 1. Um, OK, next lecture we're going to be looking at cyclotomic polynomials which have roots that are roots of unity and we're going to be using the uh, Frobenius automorphism in order to prove that the cyclotomic polynomials are irreducible over the rationals.